Hello everybody and welcome to part 25 of my God King Boudicca series. A couple things before we get started. Uh, we had just queued up a bank in Douglas and I want to switch that over to Kaylee Hall. I know that might seem weird because our happiness is phenomenal, but we are still in a expand and conquer phase and we're about to lose Zanzibar. So there's those things. Also I want to relax this guy because <clears throat> We have workers around here, so we can shift him over and use him to take up the slack as far as that goes. So, let's get on to this. A lot going on that we're doing now, preparing to do in the near future. So, so much stuff to try and keep track of. Okay. Alrighty. May purchase with faith. Alright, so, Ramsey uh, will grow to three in three turns, so if we were to purchase a Pagoda now, we would only get plus one happiness, and then in three turns, uh, the new citizen would not, would cause unhappiness, but we get the other happiness from the Pagoda, so uh, I believe all that's left at this point is uh, Edinburgh, Dublin, and Douglas, so we'll go ahead and put this in Douglas, since we do have access to freshwater tiles here. Looks like we've also grown here, so we'll go ahead and continue to grow. So there's that. We pick up a horse tile here, so we'll have this guy come start on that, and this guy come start on roads up here, so that these guys can extract quickly. Penzance grows, which is good for there for now. Let's see, Borders of Cork grow. Um, that is not useful to us. Glasgow grows, so we'll go here. Let's continue to grow a little bit, very slowly. And, oh, we did that already. All right, first influential culture. So I'm guessing that would be Germany, right? Because we kind of put them, yep, Germany. All right, we uh, made them tiny from the onset, so. That makes sense. Citrus to Pocatello for silver. Um, Pocatello. Uh, we got to keep an eye on him for his money flow. So he can uh, buy our extra cocoa. Since he's the only one expressing interest. Uh, but this doesn't mean we have citrus to sell. So I'll go ahead and sell oh, it to him it. since he's further away. Um, so there's that. Well, not only is he further away, but she's Liberty, so we don't want to give her the ability. Uh, Bucharest seeks Great Admiral, Kuala Lumpur desires Sistine Chapel, Anteater searches for science, we're totally on top of that, and no longer ally of Zanzibar. So Zanzibar, we have a great writer at once. Um, let's see, that won't be coming out for... It says 26 turns here, but if we have another great artist type generated in the meantime, it might push that back. Um, we're going to pick up another spy in a couple turns, so we'll probably put it in Zanzibar since that's happiness and we're kind of like right on the edge there. Alright, so we'll choose, choose our promotion here. We're not done with the prompts. In fact, I have gotten in the habit of checking my workers before I do the build prompt. Um, that way I, they get addressed because I'm very good at overlooking them. All right, chop, chop there. Cool. Um, I think that's everybody. Yeah, okay. They reorder as you go, so sometimes it's not so clear. All right, bank is done in Cardiff, and we're going to be 12 pop next turn. Circus City, which means we do need a zoo. Uh, Coliseum is finished and Avarist with. So let's get on to aqueduct because after that we'll go for workshop and that means we'll have a specialist slot that we definitely want to populate and the aqueduct will uh, make up for the sudden lack of growth um, you could make an argument for workshop first but we're already you know losing out on growth here so let's just get the aqueduct I know it's not going to be in time but nevertheless let's just do that alright so we are free to get to it Okay, got a couple boats here. We're kind of zoning controlling on both sides. So this guy's a little bit trapped, it would seem. So let's go ahead and put our shots down here. <clears throat> smoked him. And if we smoked him, that means 
They'll tag team that one next turn probably. It'll be interesting to see where he ends up. Maybe we uh, focus the camera there at the end of the turn just for that reason. So he's got a better spread here. We'll come here to complement that. In fact, let's come here because from here to get back here or from here, same amount of time, but if we wanted to come this way instead, uh, we do better. So this is like a better option than just chilling right there, I think. He's going to settle us some silk. This great general is going to go down and help our fish in the barrel folks because they are basically heading down to shoot some fish in a barrel, namely Carthaginian boats, which seem to have buggered off. And that's fine. I mean, if they're not here anymore, that means these guys have safe passage. But if they are, I want to take my shots on them. Uh, as for this guy, I'm just going to go ahead and step down here and put a farm. That way he continues to maintain visibility here, which just means which means this guy can continue to stay there. These guys, that's one of the things. When I said that there's a lot going on that we need to deal with, um, check this out. Germany's got a settler. Uh, looks like it's coming <clears throat> this way. Meanwhile, we have a couple of two-hex borders here, so I'm thinking let's have these... Uh, Pikeman over here. We'll have him finish the road so now this Pikeman can zoom a little bit. This worker's going to leapfrog. These guys are crossing over because there's uh, one, two shoots over here and there's not enough tiles over here to get everybody through necessarily. Yeah. Alright. We'll check on Pocatello's money. I think we did already this turn, but I don't want to overlook anything. Alright, this is the guy with range, correct? So he, depending on what the health of the swordsman is, should be able to use his double tack to eliminate this entire hex. Very nice. Which means now this guy can step and shoot. And now this guy can step and shoot. And we've killed three units. Which is fantastic. Um... I'll have him push in for visibility. He'll come here to seal the city tiles. And we'll have this worker come here. Remember, this is uh, Quebec City. We want him to get captured. There's not much of a dangle here, but nevertheless, this is the best we can expose him at this time. Um, if we were to pillage here right now, he might be so strong that it wouldn't be a lightning rod. So I'm just going to sit in place which means this worker has nothing to do this turn. I'm going to go ahead and zoom him forward. So what I think I'm going to do with this worker, we want to be able to repair this tile next turn no matter what we do, and there's no point in repairing this. So I'm going to come here and I'm going to pre-build a road because one of the thoughts I was having is our next settler, um, we can go ahead and put over here. Um, basically, the capital is going to start going into a uh, settler spree because once we reach radio, we'll have access to Eiffel Tower, which is a good chunk of tourism and a little bit of happiness, both of which would fit everything we're trying to do. So that would be nice, and the capital is best equipped to do that, um, which means we'll probably buy the hydro plant here. Um, we do have a great scientist coming soon, um, so we'll be able to, uh, wait a second, I thought I had a great scientist coming soon, 18, 17, oh yeah, 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 okay, that's what it was, all right. The uh, public school. When we get to the public school, we're going to buy it here. Uh, so this is not 18. Uh, two turns, right? Um, drops us to 16. We work this slot, one of these slots right away. We uh, increase, so divided by 2 times 3 would be... Or no, divided by 3 times 2 from 16, that'd be like 11, right? Plus the 2. So about 13 turns-ish. I know, I saw this on camera, but anyways, you can see, 11. Just as we're getting into radio, we'll ball finish that up. So, we'll buy the, assuming we can find some aluminum in time, we'll buy the hydro plant. Um, we're not, probably not going to have 
the time to build a stock exchange. Point being is if we have this city building the Eiffel Tower, uh, we're not going to be building settlers in the meantime. And settlers at this point in the game don't really cost that much. We could build elsewhere, but we got the bonus handlers here. So I'm trying to think ahead as to where we could settle. All right. This is in our backyard, so it would flip quick, which is exactly what we need in any of our settles, because the whole reason we're still settling cities is so we have more places to buy our faith bot buildings. And I was also looking at Utique, and with the amount of great generals we have and will have, <coughs> we can afford to give one up while still conducting two wars. Um, so I'm thinking settling on this copper here and dropping a citadel here. The citadel will pick up these ocean tiles, including a unique to us luxury. Um, I want to burn you take down. It's not our city. We might need to make way for the happiness to be able to capture Carthage in the first place. Um, so I was looking at that as a potential settle. Also, over here, there's silver, which we do not have. And this would be a good staging ground for attacking him, which would work out well because he's got eight wonders. Like, he's our main opponent, and he's, we can tell just by the number of wonders he has, he's heavy on the culture flow. So if we can attack and capture this city as well, will uh, totally destroy his culture intake and that will expedite right so there's three settles right there and of course it's going to take us a lot of time to get over here and get staged properly and stuff like that so I'm just trying to think as forward as possible because we might want to spit out a whole bunch of settlers um, so anyways the point being that if we do have a city here you know we're already building roads so that these guys can escape might as well complete it to this point and if we have a city here, we might as well complete the roads to this point. That way we get the city connections happiness. Uh, this will be high enough pop. It'll pay us money. This city should grow relatively quickly. You get the idea. Let's try to, I try to grand strategize when I can. And sometimes it's harder than others, especially when you're recording videos and releasing them. You kind of want to get to the next recording right away. But um, things like trying to anticipate when the great scientists are going to come out really matters because like in this case are we going to be stuck with one social policy before we get our ideology or two it might be two until you account for the uh, scientists so and uh, when you anytime I see a major tech like this almost finished I was like okay here's what I want to do this is how it's going to influence this is going to count you know etc cetera, etc cetera. all right in keeping with everything I was trying to talk about in the beginning about how we got all these things going on is Denmark. I'd like to declare war against Denmark at some point. We have a uh, both of our caravans wrapping up in 10 turns. We've got 10 turns, right? we got these guys over here that'll be able to pitch in once we're done with Carthage. Um, the whole point being is we're warring with Carthage here. We have units stationed right here that are just kind of hanging out, right? If we are going to go over to the Mayans, that means that we're going to be kind of spread out, right? So I think let's just decimate, you know, Carthage. Uh, we'll kill all the units. We don't actually want the city. We just want to kill off his army so that our army doesn't have to sit around. We'll kill off everything Germany has, maybe. I don't know. It depends on... They're starting to get some units, you know, plus caravans so we could pillage or something like that. And then as far as actual wars that matter... The Shoshone have the highest military score, um, so we would want to come back through Maria to get started with him. I don't know how all that's going to play out as far as timing when we're done with one, where the units are, etc., etc., but my point is, is if we're going to be pushing into Shoshone and trying to go over here, our homeland's going to be kind of like barren. So I figure, let's just kill off everything near us. That way there can be no like insurrection while we're gone. We can keep a skeleton crew at home. Hopefully that makes sense. I mean, obviously we're playing Liberty, so we can generate more military fairly responsively. The point I was getting at is that we would want to have a worker over here. Um, I'm thinking this forest in particular being chopped up, because we have this series of hills and altitude training. <clears throat> so I'm picturing a scenario where a longbowman could step on this hill, have good spread, step on this hill, have good spread, and approach from the south. A lot of flatland here, right? But if we're going to do that and this is gone, he could step here and aim at the cotton. And that matters because the cotton is going to be a focus fire point for both sides. He's got the city bombard here. Last we knew he had some trebuchets. He could really line up to annihilate something standing on this hex. And so could we, especially if this was gone. Plus we could get a road stem here so that archers could like move and shoot easily. 
uh, repair the cotton, dangle worker, all that good stuff that comes with a war. So since this guy can actually land on this hill this turn, I was thinking let's have this guy come over towards Denmark and he can resume his task because we're more or less caught up over here anyway so we can totally afford to do that. Wow, that was a lot of chatting. Thank you guys for your patience. I know I get long-winded at times. And, um, uh, glad that you guys still want to come along for the ride. Um, sure, why not? Although, uh, as soon as I pulled the trigger, it occurred to me we need to... Uh, one of the things I was thinking of, I don't think we have enough horses for this. Uh, we don't, so I'm going to pass. Um, one of the things I was thinking of... Oh! Oh, he, he, he took the... Oh, that's so good. He took the worker. Okay. No, one of, one of the things I was going to say is with our worker going over, we've been trying to watch on Pocatello's money, but we also need to be trying to barter for open borders here. And I don't know that I can anticipate his fancies shifting all that much from one turn or another, but if we have... Like when the iron came back, we could have like maybe tried to bribe him with some iron. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, we got three iron coming back next turn. Um, as for horses, because I'd rather give those things up than the raw gold, since everybody's giving us crappy uh, exchange rates and all that stuff. Anyways, cork has grown. So we can go here, we can go there. Um, I think let's just grow. I know we're kind of acting on borrowed happiness here, but... Uh, we do want to get an early university here for all the jungle ties. Be helpful there, so we're just going to grow it. Cardiff, we can get on to more of the river tiles, because hydro plants are on the horizon. Um, if I remember from my count off screen, this is the worst of our three good hydro plant cities. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. <coughs> and as you can see, we'd want to grow another pot to be able to work this effectively, so... Yep, we'll keep populating those. This is really good, though. Okay. It's unfortunate that we can't really influence any of this stif stuff this turn. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we'll come back to that. I have a routine that I try to follow to make sure I help me keep track of everything that's going on. Uh, shrine's done here. A lot of banana tiles here, so I definitely think we'll hit four pot before library or, you know, somewhere in between. Uh, let's see here. He's hopping down here, so Settler gets into position. Um, one, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, along the road. We can actually come up here, pre-build a farm. No reason, just he's not going to do anything else this turn, so we'll come back and start on the cattle next turn. Oh, and as far as this city goes, since we're not going to have any hills right away and we got one, two, three tiles it's going to grow to, I want to buy a hill tile um, at some point before we grow. Uh, and I was even thinking maybe this tile as opposed to this one, because you can see Ramsey's is thinking about growing here. And if you remember earlier, there was a point where Berlin, its only border growth option was this jungle tile, and then we planted cork, and suddenly it was like, oh, well, maybe I'll buy any one of these other ones. So... The way borders are shared seems to have an influence on that. So if I buy this hill from the city, I would be worried that Ramsey would, you know, go a little haywire and not necessarily pick up the banana soon enough. So I decided it would be that hill rather than the other one. Let's take a couple peeks over here. Uh, across the river, there we go. Looks like they're getting started on the uh, repair of the horses, which is nice. So yeah, again, we can't with these units easily influence any of these tiles. Um, I mean, I suppose we could like clear this off in a way that he can get out of the way and the range guy can come over, but um, let's focus on what we can do. So let's put at least one shot in here, right? Oh, okay, so that's just enough to flat out kill him. Alright, so we'll take this. Quebec City, return the unit, come back down, he fortifies. So Quebec City, let's go look at them. Uh, just gained 45, so we can sell off the incense now. Easy peasy. We'll check his money, he's not doing so good. But we know this guy's been giving us fairly good trades. So we'll come to him. There we go. More profits. 
And I don't mean religious folk. Oh, I was just about to click go. Oh, where'd the boat go? Where'd the boat go? I forgot to put the camera here. Drats. Alright, well, we'll just keep uh, dancing here for visibility then, I guess. Uh, what about over here? Are there boats? Don't see any. I'm not going to hop in the water yet. Um, let's see. These guys here. Uh, let's go for the one in the back. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, so he'll come here. He'll come here. He can step up on the hill and have good spread. He can hit some things from here or step, hit some things or end up on this peninsula or something. Or maybe we just hop back on the road because I'm not seeing any boats just yet. Okay. He's heading over to Denmark. We know that much. Um, he's going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we'll do that. All right. So he's got one more shot, so we'll go ahead and go there. Oh, nice, soft city. I like it. Look at how soft that city is. I like it. All right, so we're definitely going to pillage here. And then we'll have this guy come up. Oh, that was a good pillage. He's uh, quite healthy. Ooh, maybe too healthy. Luckily, the health of the city is so low that it might favor melee even if they weren't already damaged just to help prevent the possibility of capture. Alright, so these guys are going to come. Looks like we're getting here just in the nick of time too. Here we go. So I imagine he comes here. We heal in place. This guy hops to here. He's blockaded. Starts to bug out. We leave him a gap. We can keep him dancing like this indefinitely. And then whether the Denmark army or the Carthage army comes over here to start something with Germany, we can just... Uh, attack and pounce or whatever. Okay, he's going to come down towards the fish in the barrel, but it's starting to look like there's no boats over there, so maybe we, ro you know, bend over to uh, Denmark instead. Um, let's see, this guy here. Oh yeah, this worker here and this worker here um, can start a road here to the new city. He can stop one, two, three, so he'll be in position. Um, I guess alternatively we could build the road from Cork, but generally speaking you want to build the roads in such a way that they facilitate movement from your capital. Although our, uh, our shape in general is a little almond shape and we got a branch here to go west and east and then up here we got a branch to go northeast and west, so uh, it's just a guideline, it's you know, not hard hard rule or anything. Uh, these guys might as well just stay where they are. It looks like we got the visibility covered. Uh, similar story there. Great General's fine right where he's at. We'll uh, sit tight. Alright. Um, we don't need to put the camera anywhere else, so I guess we just continue here, right? We had possible bolts there, possible bolts there, uh, but this is guaranteed action, so I think we'll just leave it right here. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, we said yes to the other one, right? Oh, wait, we were waiting for a pack of iron to come back to dangle in front of Pachacuti. Rot row. So I guess that means we just sold off one of the three. That was kind of loud, wasn't it? Alright, so before we do anything else, let's go into the capital, buy the public school. Um, we could pull from this hex or this hex. I don't think the extra one hammer is going to make a difference since all we're doing is like uh, spamming settlers until Eiffel Tower. I mean, give or take, we'll revisit it as we go, obviously, because I don't, I don't know if my counts are off and stuff, but I think that one hammer is not going to be as important as the three gold. In fact, in general, in fact, that's why I was in Cork, was thinking about the whole do we work here, do we work here. I want to be picking up as much gold as we can everywhere. Uh, as you can see, we're just kind of throwing gold around. Um, what was the other thing I was talking about? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, checking his gold, trying open boards with him before we do anything else, because... Alright, so, he's been saying four gold, and given our current exchange rate, he might consider these three, like, worth five gold. He's not asking for any of them now. I would ask for one gold per turn as compensation for the exchange rate, but keep in mind, he's not actually asking for these things. Okay, so that's just strictly better than having to shell out the gold itself. Especially when you consider he's one of our more favorable exchange partners. And he wasn't even interested in them, so... Whew. 
All right, I just wanted to make sure I didn't forget that. I was thinking about it as a turn pass and then the whole thing. Yeah, big stuff. All right, we said this is going to go to Zanzibar so that we can try to keep them as allies. Um, in fact, since we're aiming for radio, we're going to jump another era fairly soon. Uh, we can put that other one in Iffy since that's the other. Hey, boats! Boats. So wheat. Okay. Well, let's continue dealing with all of this. Berlin Groves, that's not a useful tile. Which is kind of nice in the fact that we're kind of delegating these workers over here, right? So I figure we'll have these guys pre do the road. He can stop here, pre build, come over here, clear the jungle so that by the time the city's here, we'll have a production tile to grow into. And with the second worker, we can get this off the ground with road in no time. So that's fantastic. I like that. Dublin grows, and we want it to continue to grow, which is a bit of a tall order working on them specialist slots, but you know, you gotta do it. Alright, city state bonuses changed. Ur cancels quest, don't know what that means. Kabul wants Monaco Bully, that's far away. Anteater in Japan now allies. Horses from Bratislava. So there we go. You saw that coming, kind of. Didn't know when it was gonna go through, but he was definitely working on it. So Penzance now has another freshwater tile to work, so we're gonna have to give up the gold, but it makes perfect sense to do so under these circumstances. Market's finished here. We're already at five pops. So let's go to Coliseum. Uh, let's see. Finish a... So he can get on the road next turn and we'll figure out a new project for him. And then, uh, tech, 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 tech. Into electricity. But of course. Alright. I want to come back to them. We're so close to getting a great general... I want to see where it spawns, you know? Okay. So, once again, we can't reach the units, but there is a good chance we just take the city this turn. So let's just get our shots in. Oh, there's the great general. Oh, sweet! He actually spawns over here. Nice. Okay, so now we have three great generals, but we're going to lose one up here, but not until we're actually done up here. So the great general that's up there will probably suffice. And then this great general can meet up with our primary army when they redistribute, which means the great general that was coming down can actually uh, head over to... Well, let's get the worker out of the way. Head over to Denmark. Yeah. That's one thing I like about these road forks. Next turn, when we see this great general, he's on this side. We'll be able to see, oh yeah, that's where he's heading. Sweet. So now we can deal with these boats. Um, we'll have him step up here, shoot at that. He shoots at that. Oh, okay. And he's a double tapper, so we can move here to get at this. And uh, we'll move him here. But wait. Hey, you know what? I'm actually going to bring this guy into the water here, because we can be seen by that, we'll get slammed by that, but he'll be standing here when he does, and we'll get three shots in, uh, while under the influence of the Great General. So the Great General can stay along the road, or he can zoom up to here if need be, if we really need to extend, so I like those uh, options. Uh, I really wish I knew what happened to the other boat here, I thought we had him trapped, but that doesn't appear to be the case, does it? Okay. Well, we're going to want to ritual all these people at some point to get back up here. Uh, really, it comes down to him, right? One, two, three, four turns prior to war is the count, as I'm counting it out. Uh, we're going to settle a city this turn, so let's make sure we get all of our warring done first. Um, I already took a shot with that guy, so we'll go there. He's the one without range. He needs the XP most. Boom, boom, boom. It's going down this turn. Fantastic. All right. So, thinking forward, we're going to be capturing this guy, right? These guys here and here want to be here and here, so that next turn they can be here and here. Plus, if we shift them from here and here to here and here, we no longer have anybody within range of that guy. So what this means to me is we can actually pillage both of these tiles, you know, for the extra cash. It's only 18, but, you know, whatever. It's free money. I'm not going to pass that up. And then we'll go here and there. View the city. Hey, it's got a circus. Nice. I'm still not clear on whether or not the happiness 
shines through while it's in resistance. But either way, I don't even think that's a building we can sell. Uh, we'll find out here, though, because we're going to raise the city no matter what. Still at 5, happiness, which means when we drop the Silk City, we'll still be good. Yep, cannot sell it. So that's fine. It'll, I don't know if it'll be influencing it or not. We do have the unique luxury here. And now it's going to be saying that we have extra iron and copper to sell. We're going to have to resist that temptation. Um, I would say that alternatively what we could do is leave the city at one pop. So we have the benefit of all of these resources that we could actively sell off. And then basically time it to where we finish the burn down right as we go to settle the city. Drop the, you know, so that there's no gap on our side of things. Um, that's a bit of a commitment. Um, we don't know, you know, if we're going to take Carthage, we're going to need a lot more happiness than this. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to continue to slam home. I think it's a good idea when we're, you're having this successful of a Liberty game to manage all of your local happiness as best you can anyway. So everything we're doing here with the zoos and the Kaylee Halls makes sense. And you can see there's a lot of them, right? One, two, three zoos that we can see here, two Kaylee Halls, and that's before we even scroll. Yeah, Coliseum. So that's like six, twelve happiness we're, you know, banking on here. And we're still able to buy our faith bought buildings as we go. Uh, speaking of which, notice we have 300, but we didn't get the prompt. We jumped there, so now it's, they're going to cost 400, I think. We can uh, check in here and verify that. Yeah, 84 to go, plus that, that's 400. So that's unfortunate. And when we jump another era, um, there comes a point, it might be modern era, where instead of going up to 500, it goes up to 600, which is sucky. But even at this point, that's every four turns. So, um... Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, I don't know if we're going to have the happiness to even take Carthage. We, we started the war to decimate her army. It sure would be nice to take Carthage. <clears throat> we'll be... Uh, coastal exposed, which was actually one of my reasons wanting to offset Utique. Not only to make it our own, but to not be coastal exposed since uh, Japan's hated us from the beginning and he's very coastal. We don't want to be exposed to him. And yeah, the Silk City will be exposed, but the geography is such that I think we could handle an attack there. Um, as far as Carthage goes, we don't really care if it gets recaptured if we do capture it because then, you know, a capital city gets quartered, so whatever. We started the war to kill her army off, not to reap the benefits. I mean, it would be nice, kind of like Copenhagen has been. Uh, Copenhagen, you know, 40 gold per turn, that's like 20% of our gold per turn, and that's not counting what we're getting from selling off, you know, cotton, two copies of wine, <coughs> horses. Yeah, so I don't know if we're going to have the happiness to do that, but we should still at least push on and get some visibility and try to do what we can, because that's what we came for. It's just a question of, do we risk selling off these resources so that we have the gains now knowing because if we sell off all the copper and then we end up screwing this up somehow or later changing our minds to burn it down all the way then we're out our own copper you know what i mean and that's a impact on happiness so that's where my thoughts are regarding all of that okay um worker can step forward because as we occupy this tile and this tile this tile in particular is going to be extremely vulnerable. It's not a hill. Um, we can see he's got range. There's a catapult here. Where is it going to land? I don't know. But uh, we might get focus fired here. So we definitely want to be able to pillage and repair every single turn. Or in the first turn, uh, pillage, repair, pillage. Just to, you know, get him up. A uh, great general can probably step forward as well. From here, he'll cover both of these hexes. And we got to assume that these guys are going to want to march forward. So, there's all of that. Alright. We'll radar since we have no protection here so that we can continue building roads. Alright. So, we're ready for this, right? Oh, wait, maybe not. We got. Okay, we already addressed that. And there's nothing to address here. Yeah, we're done with all of our fighting, so we can go ahead and drop our Silk City. Production focus. Work to good food tile. Buy the monument. Build the shrine. A bit repetitive at this point, but uh, hey, you can go with what works, right? And there we go. 
get started on that. So Inverness is on its way. It will flip in three turns, um, which is great because we're going to be able to buy next turn. Ramsey's is going to be three pop next turn. There's our Pagoda. Uh, several turns after that, Inverness, we can go ahead and put the Moss there, and then uh, maybe the Pagoda there, I don't know. We're starting off with good growth tile, but uh, three pops a bit larger of a hurdle. Okay, you'll heal since you're just somewhat damaged anyways, and we'll have this guy blockade, and we'll try and keep an eye on that situation. He does not have a need to move, neither does that guy. Alrighty, so I know I spent a good amount of that talking, but, oh yeah, yeah, I never did get to the resources. We kind of said, yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Um, the reason why I'm, the, the bottom line as to why I'm okay doing this is because this city is responsible for a unique to us luxury. So if we burn the city down all the way, we also lose the pearls. And I think the exchange rate on that is either zero or one. So burning the city down all the way for the one happiness probably isn't going to make that big of a difference when you consider all the other influences on happiness that we're dealing with. So that's my motivations for saying, yeah, let's go ahead and risk actively selling into it. He doesn't have any money, so that just means only she's interested in copper, which is unfortunate because we actually have another extra copy. Although this is nice because if we do burn the city down... Oh, never mind. We would lose the two copper. Never mind. I was going to say something that was untrue. And this guy's been giving us one for one, so we'll just do that. There we go. If this guy would ever get some money, we could actually sell cocoa and copper. So let's hope on that. Anyways, we are past the half hour mark, and there's so many decisions to make. Uh, I do want to take this slow. You know, we got four potential wars, uh, half a continent away settle, a lot of things being considered all at once. I do not want to make mistakes. Um, based on the comments I received, the min-max gameplay, meticulous style is what people like. So I want to be able to deliver good shows for you guys. So thank you for your understanding. I hope you're enjoying the series. Please leave me a like and subscribe if you feel that I've earned it. And I will see you guys in the next part. Take care.